The episode opens up with the Green Lantern Corps going up against a powerful cult. Arcus, Galius, Katma, and Kilowog quickly find themselves cornered. Katma tells her crew to hide inside a cave until reinforcements can arrive, but even as her team follows her inside, she realizes that they don't have much of a chance against their enemies who relentlessly attack them. When Galius reaches the same conclusion, he tells Katma that they are not up against amateurs. He and Arcus claim that they are going to get some altitude to overpower their enemies. Despite Katma's protests, the two of them fly above the cave, but realize that Katma was right when they find themselves in the direct line of fire of the cult. The two of them are killed before they have a chance to go back. Seeing her friends dead, Katma tells Kilowog that they need to warn the Guardians of the danger headed their way. Kilowog tries to protest, claiming that he does not want to leave her alone, but since Katma is their leader, she tells him that she needs to stay back and give him enough time to get away. Knowing that he does not have much of a choice, Kilowog agrees and prepares to fly just as Katma creates a powerful shield around them. Once he is out of the cave, Katma manages to hold on for a little longer until she, too, is overpowered. On the other end of the galaxy, Hawkgirl and Green Lantern are making repairs when Flash interrupts them and tells them that their bickering makes them sound like an old married couple. Just then, the alarms on the watchtower begin going crazy. Hawkgirl informs them that something is heading towards them fast. Green Lantern suggests that it could be a meteor, but she reveals that she can detect a life force. The mysterious life force crashes on Earth, and the three of them quickly fly towards it. Much to their surprise, they discover that it is Kilowog who remains awake long enough to tell Green Lantern that Katma has been taken. As soon as he loses consciousness, Green Lantern tells his Justice League friends to take care of him and flies out to find more information on Katma. Flash and Hawkgirl take Kilowog back to the Watchtower where John treats him. Once John is done treating Kilowog, he wakes up and begins telling them about the events that brought him to them. He explains that their enemies are called the Legion of the Third Eye. They are a fanatical cult from a planet called Kalinor who attacked the Randstad 7, which is why the Green Lantern Corps was called in to help. Kilowog and his crew were given simple orders, asking them to bring in their boss, Despero. He claims that no one really knew how powerful Despero was and that they severely underestimated him, which is why he was lucky to get away since none of his friends stood a chance. When Flash asks him who Katma is, he reveals that Katma is the Green Lantern who trained the Justice League Green Lantern, but he does not know what happened to her. Elsewhere, Green Lantern, who had been flying deep into the galaxy, comes across a destroyed G-Class Green Lantern cruiser. He realizes that whoever destroyed it must have been powerful enough to take down something as strong as that. He then notices the Legion of the Third Eye logo and realizes that Katma might have been taken to Kalinor. He quickly makes his way to Kalinor, where he follows a civilian who is being chased by Despero's guards for having books. Once they corner him, the guards tell him that they are going to kill him for disobeying Despero's rules. Before they can strike at him, Green Lantern knocks the guards out and asks the man to help him with something in return for saving his life. However, the man is too scared to stay back and rushes away. At this point, Green Lantern realizes that all of the bystanders are cowering away from him as if they have been warned that he is dangerous. Back at the Watchtower, John tells Kilowog that he is unable to reach Green Lantern, Kilowog replies by saying that Green Lantern must be in Kalinor, since that is the only planet far enough for their comlinks to get affected. Hawkgirl joins the two of them as well, and tells Kilowog that they can't let Green Lantern face Despero and his cult alone. John asks him if he can take the Justice League members to Kalinor. Since Kilowog has now made a full recovery, he agrees to take them along with him, but admits that his ring is completely out of power, 
and he needs to charge it. Flash tells him that he can use Green Lantern's lantern battery to restore his ring's power. As they try to figure out where Green Lantern has kept his battery, he makes his way to a small house in Kalinor when he's interrupted by a guard who asks him why he is trying to break into Katma's quarters. Green Lantern asks him if he knows who Katma Tui is, to which he replies by saying that his name is Rodoko and he is Katma's friend. He claims that he does not recognize Green Lantern and that he should leave, but before he can draw out his weapon, Green Lantern tells him that he has arrived to take Katma to Despero. The guard apologizes for interrupting him and rushes back to his post. Green Lantern then enters Katma's room but finds it empty. Just as he discovers her ring, he gets attacked from behind and loses consciousness. Meanwhile, Flash and Kilowog arrive at Green Lantern's apartment to look for his lantern battery. Kilowog claims that most Green Lanterns keep their batteries hidden inside small compartments and begins scanning the room using his ring. Flash, who is more interested in stealing Green Lantern's food heads to the fridge and finds his ice cream stash. Both Kilowog and Flash get distracted by the things in Green Lantern's apartment. When he finds a cassette lying around, he gives it to Kilowog who accidentally eats it, not knowing what it is. While the two of them are busy, a woman sneaks up to them and starts beating Flash with her broom. She asks them what they are doing in Green Lantern's apartment. Flash tries to tell her that they are Green Lantern's friends, but she does not believe them and continues to hit him with her broom. During this, Kilowog scans the living room again and discovers the lantern battery hidden inside the wall. As soon as he grabs it, both he and Flash rush out of the apartment as the woman continues to yell at them, claiming that Green Lantern had warned her that people like them would try to break in. In Kalinor, Green Lantern is taken to Despero, who claims that the Guardians should step aside while he introduces a new order to the universe. He tells Green Lantern that he would be wise to join him. Green Lantern tells him that he is not interested in what Despero wants, but this does not sit well with the Tyrant who replies by saying that what he wants is no longer relevant, claiming that the only will that matters is his because he is the one true voice of the Flame of Pitar. Despero recalls the time when he was a peasant who was cast out by his people due to his deformity, a third eye on his forehead. After weeks of traveling alone, Despero found himself in the Wastelands, which he believed was his fate. One night, while making his way through them, he was cornered by a gang of thieves who tried to steal what little he had on him. However, this is when his fate intervened and a rumble that shook the ground led the thieves to flee. Before they could get away from him, the ground split open and one of the thieves fell in. Then, a flame shot out of the split ground and killed the gang. Curious, Despero went closer to the flame and realized that it was speaking to him, and for the first time, his third eye opened. Sometime later, he returned to his village and displayed the power he had possessed from the flame. He showed his people a time when Kalinor would become a paradise. He believed that Pytar charged him with the duty to lead his people to a world of greatness and spread its light across the galaxy. Once he has finished telling his story, Green Lantern tells Despero that he does not believe his story. To prove that he is telling him the truth, Despero orders his men to open a large door, behind which a white flame is seen. Despite this, Green Lantern remains skeptical. When Despero notices that Green Lantern is challenging him, he orders his men to electrocute him. But before they can attack him, Green Lantern uses his own powers and knocks the guards down. Despero finally decides to fight back, knowing that his people are watching. He opens his third eye and a white fire collides with Green Lantern's power. Green Lantern gives it his all, but as expected, he is no match for the Tyrant who by now had gathered enough power to become untouchable. Green Lantern then musters up what little strength he has left and tries to attack Despero again, but gets knocked down the stairs of his throne. 
Despero then orders his priestess to throw him into the flame. When Green Lantern looks up, he is shocked to find that it is Katma, which is why he cannot bring himself to attack her. Katma drags him towards the flame and throws him inside. Deep underground, two of Despero's people mess with the machines and turn them to full power, causing an unconscious Green Lantern to get knocked out of it. To his surprise, he finds Radako in front of him, along with another man known as Shiflet. Shiflet welcomes Green Lantern to the Resistance and helps him stand up. Green Lantern asks him how he is still alive, and Shiflet reveals that they had plucked him out of the flame using a matter transporter. What he finds even more surprising is that they have a matter transporter, but before they can give him a reply, Katma appears behind them and tells Green Lantern that this was all she could manage to gather in the short time that she had. Relieved, Green Lantern rushes towards her, but she punches him in the face and asks him why he came after her. He tells her that Kilowog had told the Justice League that she was in trouble. She claims that she is working undercover because she could not attack Despero directly. She tells him that he needs to stay with the Resistance while she works to gather as much information as she can. Meanwhile, Despero gathers his troops around the Flame of Pitar, while he asks the Flame to grant him more power. As the Flame spreads through his troops, he sends them out into the galaxy to spread Kalinor's light in the world. Katma gathers around with members of the Resistance and tells them that Despero has managed to create a formidable force and that he just might be able to take over the galaxy. When Green Lantern hears this, he tells her that Despero does not have enough manpower to take over the galaxy. He claims that they should call the Green Lantern Corps to take them down. However, Katma replies by saying that Despero has the ability to control minds and will recruit people from the planets he takes over. Shiflet, who knew Despero even before the Resistance was formed, tells Green Lantern that what Katma is telling them is the truth, and that his powers should not be underestimated. Despite this, Green Lantern remains convinced that Despero's army of amateur soldiers will not stand a chance against the highly trained Green Lantern Corps. This is when Katma reveals that Despero has placed a dampening field around the planet, which is stopping them from communicating with the Oa and calling for backup. Just as Green Lantern tells Katma that they need to hold on for a while longer until he can get help, the roof blasts open. Despero's men land inside and begin shooting blindly at the Resistance members. As Shiflet starts shooting back, he tells Katma that they have been betrayed and blames her for leading Despero's men to them. However, Katma denies having anything to do with them and rushes to help as well. She starts taking down Despero's men while Green Lantern does the same, but before he can do anything, he notices that his ring is not working. Katma manages to save him at the last moment and asks him why he is not defending himself. He tells her that his ring is not working and rushes to take cover. When he hears some of the men saying that they are outnumbered, Green Lantern refuses to give up so easily and grabs a gun from one of Despero's men. As he begins shooting back at them, Katma creates a large barrier to keep them out and tells everyone to regroup at their secondary site. They blast their way through the streets but become trapped when two trucks cover their exits. Katma realizes that everything has gone to shit and tells everyone that they might have to fight for their lives in the street. They don't get a chance to fight back because Flash, Hawkgirl, John, and Kilowog land in front of them, taking their enemies by surprise. They take everyone down and regroup with the rest of the Resistance. While the Justice League introduces themselves to the Resistance, Green Lantern tells them that they need to hurry and leave before the reinforcement shows up. Sometime later at the secondary Resistance site, Shiflet shows Jian ancient writings on the wall of the cave. To his surprise, Jian is able to read them and tells him that there is a recurring theme in the writings. 
Shiflet reveals that no one knows who built the fortress years ago, which is why the writings have been seen as just symbols. John claims that the writings suggest that there was once a flourishing ecosystem in Kalinor, much different than the barren desert it is today. Shiflet informs John that there were legends that called Kalinor a paradise. John then points towards a symbol of a tree and tells Shiflet that it has been repeated multiple times in the writings, and that it must hold some sort of significance. Shiflet looks at the writings and says that the only symbol he can recognize is the flame of Pytar. This could only mean that evil was at the root of Kalinor for centuries. Their conversation is interrupted by Radako, who tells them that the symbols are random writings on the walls, and that they should come up with a better plan to take Despero down, rather than spending their time talking about things that don't matter. When Shiflet tells him that he needs to be a little patient, Radako claims that they might as well accept their defeat. Once he leaves, Shiflet apologizes to John for Radako's behavior, but confesses that he is starting to feel the same way. John only replies by saying that it is only true if he believes that it is. Meanwhile, Katma and Green Lantern try to get his ring to work, but as expected, it does not work again. Green Lantern wonders if his ring is broken, but Katma tells him that the Green Lantern rings cannot be broken, but something else must have been broken inside him. Although Green Lantern does not think this can be true, Katma reminds him that Despero has been able to break the wills of people all over Kalinor. Green Lantern admits that he has been feeling like something important is missing inside him. He asks her what he will do if he can't restore his power, but Katma reassures him that she has trained him once and will do it again if the need arises. Green Lantern tells her that he does not want to go back to learning the basics, but this does not sit well with his mentor, who tells him that he, along with the rest of the Corps, start using their rings and forget about the discipline they need to practice to master their powers. Knowing that he does not have much of a choice, Green Lantern agrees to let Katma train him again and build up his mental discipline. On the other hand, Despero asks his men if they have been able to contact the Ministry of Conversion. His advisor steps forward and informs him that his forces have come back with a report. A man named Franzi steps forward and tells Despero that despite their best efforts, the non-believers have managed to escape. Despero realizes that Franzi has come to beg for forgiveness. He tells him to go to the desert with limited resources and wait there until he receives a vision. Only then will he be able to re-enter the kingdom. Hearing this, Franzi leaves happily after praising Despero. As soon as he is gone, Despero tells his advisor to inform Franzi's men that he will not be returning. He also orders that his men should leave again in search of the non-believers. His advisor speaks up for the first time and asks Despero why he is worried about the non-believers when his power is much greater than theirs. Despero tells him that one voice of opposition is enough to cause problems for them. He claims that his word is absolute and that everyone needs to believe it. During this, Green Lantern begins his training with Katma, who reminds him that maintaining his power is more than just a physical effort. However, no matter what he does, Green Lantern struggles to keep a hold on his power and even gets knocked down because of it. Katma approaches him and angrily tells him that he needs to work on his control because he is acting like an amateur. Annoyed, both of them decide to walk away until they cool down. Hawk Girl, who had overheard their conversation, tells Green Lantern that although Katma is wrong to expect him to remain the same person he once was while she was training him, she is right about him giving up easily. Feeling motivated once again, Green Lantern heads back to continue his training. Meanwhile, John tells Shiflet that they need to uncover Despero's weakness. While they are talking, Kilowog walks over to them. 
John asks him if their rings and lantern batteries are powered by a much larger power source, to which Kilowog replies by saying that everything is powered by the central power battery in Oe. Unlike their lantern batteries, the central power battery's energy is almost infinite. John realizes that Despero must be using a similar kind of energy source where he is drawing his power from. Green Lantern, who had joined them along with Katma, suggests that it could be the flame. John claims that Despero is somehow drawing power from the flame and channeling it through his third eye. Hawkgirl immediately suggests that they can destroy the flame and in turn put an end to Despero's tyranny. However, Katma speaks up for the first time and tells them that the flame of Pytar is made of pure nuclear plasma, they can't just blow it out. Kilowog chimes into the conversation as well and claims that they can blow it out using a carbon bomb and that he can build one in a few hours. At the same time, Despero's forces begin launching their attacks and start taking over one planet at a time. Back in Kalinor, Despero's advisor tells him that he has a visitor. To his surprise, he notices Radako approaching him. Radako reveals that the non-believers are hiding underground and even offers to take Despero to them. Despero asks him why he would betray his people, but Radako claims that he only wants to be with the winning side. Convinced, Despero tells his advisor to prepare his forces so that he can teach the Resistance a lesson. Inside the catacombs, everyone prepares to head into battle, and Hawkgirl watches as Green Lantern loads himself up with ammunition. Katma, who is standing next to her, reveals that Green Lantern is no longer useful, and tells Hawkgirl that she will send his replacement to the League soon. However, Hawkgirl is not ready to give up on Green Lantern just yet. Shiflet tells the Resistance members about an exhaust port in the palace that will allow them to sneak into the throne room. While Kilowog gets to work, they hear an explosion not far from them as Despero's forces storm into the catacombs. Green Lantern begins firing his gun at them, but it is no use as the flame of Pytar protects them from getting hurt. Hawkgirl swoops in to attack, but once again she is overpowered as well and is knocked back along with Green Lantern. When Katma notices that they are about to be captured, she uses her ring to close off the entrance to block Despero's men from reaching Kilowog and Flash. As soon as the exit is closed, Flash wonders what Katma is doing. John tells them that they cannot afford to get caught and that Katma is only buying them time. The two of them rush to find the flame while everyone outside is captured and brought before Despero. Hawkgirl, Green Lantern, and Katma are tied up in front of Despero, who claims that he does not know how they survived the flame, but reveals that he has more use for them in his forces. Angry, Green Lantern tells him that they will never fight alongside him, but Despero only replies by saying that they don't have a choice. He then tells them that he has launched the first wave of invasion and is soon going to launch another one where the three of them will be part of it. He channels the flame of Pitar through his third eye and attacks Katma with it. During this, Kilowog, Flash, and John reach the throne room where they begin tackling Despero's men. Soon, they reach the flame and activate the bomb, but before they can throw it in, John receives a telepathic message and asks them to stop. On the other hand, Despero turns to Hawkgirl and claims that she will be one of his personal attendants. Green Lantern begs Despero to not touch her, but his pleas and threats fall on deaf ears as Despero attacks Hawkgirl as well. As she begins to scream, Green Lantern somehow musters up the strength and summons the ring that Despero had displayed in front of them. As soon as the ring is on his finger, he tackles Despero and claims that the real fight has just begun. In the flame room, Gion reveals that the flame is a sentient being. It is alive and feels pain. He then touches the flame, claiming that it wants to make contact. While they figure out what the flame wants, Green Lantern and Despero continue to fight 
when they notice that his third eye has closed on its own. Just then, John makes contact with the flame and jumps inside as Despero's men barge into the room as well. Kilowog builds a shield around them to keep out their attacks when John suddenly emerges from the flame and speaks in a strange voice. He claims that he is the Pitar and that the flame was never meant to be used for evil. He goes on to say that Despero has manipulated everyone and that they must reject Despero's evil ways for Kalinor to once again be restored as a paradise. When Despero's men fall to their knees, the flame begins to spread out and a tree emerges from the ground. Its roots begin to spread and even take Despero along with it. All of his men who were on their way to the other planets turned into trees as well. Once the tree takes its full form, destroying Despero's palace as it grows. Kalinor once again regains its beauty after years of entrapment, becoming what was once known as a paradise. With their work done, the Justice League leaves to head back home. Despite Katma's offer for him to stay back, Green Lantern decides to return with them as well claiming that it is his rightful place. Thank you for watching. Check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you next time.